Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Kero. My name is Hans. I'm Edward. And we are your hosts for now and forevermore. Or until one of us becomes lords of the underworld and just like oh, why the underworld though, Edward? Why Be- the underworld? <laughs> because I don't know, I was in a gothic mode this morning. Okay. Yeah, triple six Illuminati. This yeah, is what you're all that thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to one of the internet's premier podcasts, at least in our opinion, for everything related to gaming, entertainment, okay. technology, and lifestyle, news, reviews, and previews, all wrapped up in a wonderful geeky coffin. We haven't Edward, had that one yet. You're supposed we to haven't be. Had that one yet. What happened? What happened to hey, be consistently positive? That's still positive. Haven't you seen Adam's family? Okay, I it's mean, only positive if you're a vampire. And the last time I checked, neither of us are vampires as much as much look, as we, we wish want to be, we were. Okay. <laughs> let me live. Let me have this one. <laughs> we're both in our thirties now. We want to be okay. Uh, for our regular <laughs> listeners, welcome back. If you're new, welcome, so and we hope you enjoy. For those of you who have been following the podcast, you will have noted that Edward and I are back in our usual setup. Thanks, COVID. Thanks. <laughs> we, you know, if, if, for those of you who don't know, or if you're new, Edward and I are based in South Africa and our vaccine rollout is an absolute shambles. And so it's going to be a long time before anyone is vaccinated unfortunately, and therefore, you know, we keep having spikes in the COVID thingy, what do you call it, the waves, we're in wave three at the moment, and it's really awful, anyway, we're not going to talk too much about it, because it's depressing F, and there's enough of that in the world. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Edward, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm actually good. How are you? Are you really though? Because I spotted a tweet, something about you bleeding out last night. Well, I'm still good. Um, I just woke up in like a pool of blood, <laughs> dried blood already, but I'm I'm good. All leading you down the road of being a vampire. Yes. I guess. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, that, that could be it. I mean, okay. So, so pro-life tip for everyone. If you stub your toe in the middle of the night, check that shit out and don't just go back to sleep after you've went to Well, the- I mean, if, if you stub it in the dark, right? That's kind of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't don't just stumble out of bed, hit your toe against the wall, and carry on with life as if and, and just happened. just pretend like everything was fine. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, How about you? Well, I mean, I'm I'm alright, I suppose. I mean, as you know, and, and as we've mentioned, we don't want to speak about it too much, but you know, there've been a lot of scares in terms of COVID recently. I mean, I know in mm-hmm. your family and in my family, so it's just like lockdown, like there's no tomorrow. Um, yeah. Anyway, otherwise, we're doing fine. <laughs> yeah shit happens shit happens all Ugh. the time <laughs> <laughs> all the time <laughs> all right all right all right now as per normal we are going to launch into our weekly question which we would love for you our adoring listeners to always listen to what we have to say and before edward and i begin speaking think about your answer and then yeah. send it to us, even if it's after the fact, it doesn't matter. Or just, you know, write your, your, your gut response below our videos or in DMs or online and Twitter, wherever, wherever it is. Just let us know because we love hmm. seeing your feedback and reading it. It's just, it's just one of the, the highlights of doing the Gettle podcast. Right. So for this week's question, yes. Edward, are you ready? Mm. And it's weird. Ready. That I'm asking you if you're ready, since you are the one <laughs> who gave us this question. <laughs> Pose the question. I am very ready. Okay. Yes. If you were a royal, mm-hmm. what weird and arbitrary rule would you enforce in your kingdom? I know you wrote home here, but you know, if you're a royal, obviously it would be kingdom, you, know, you, it, you, have, it you have a domain that you, you're ru- ruling over. Yeah. That is. Honestly speaking, Edward, what a great question. Um, you Thank know, you. one of the, the first things that comes to mind for me would be pet peeves. And as a royal, how I would want to stop people 
from exacerbating my annoyance. And so it would be things like, if you put the toilet paper on where the paper goes out the back instead of out the front, you will be yeah. hanged. Okay. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> For example, <laughs> or if you're one of those people who doesn't roll up the toothpaste nicely and you squeeze it like a savage, you will also be hanged. <laughs> That's a bit OTT, though, in my opinion. I mean, it's your kingdom, fine. The thing is, I t- I put toilet rolls the other way around. No, not, man, not Edward, no. Front okay. over back. Well, you're, you're dead now. Because... Let me put it this way. <laughs> if you have a cat, okay, and you do, but yours is, isn't one of those cats. Um, <laughs> we used to have a cat. Uh, he ran away long ago now, but he used to unroll the toilet paper if it, every time it was over the front. Um, but of, before that, I also did it, to be fair. Um, doing it my way, the way I do it now, actually helps it, it helps alleviate that issue how so, so there's that i don't i don't, I don't know it just how. didn't roll it down as far as i understand okay, look if a cat's gonna scratch something it's gonna scratch it it doesn't matter which oh, yeah. way that thing is rolling it's gonna just scratch it okay <laughs> well that's what happened anyway anyway so. that was that was just my my first gut thing like i said uh-huh. if i was to do like pet peeves those would be the things but I actually think, you know, if I was a royal and I mm-hmm. had a kingdom, I think I would probably be like free coffee mm. for all my citizens because uh, that's what we produce. <laughs> coffee is expensive. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But we're wealthy, remember? We're super wealthy. So Yeah, you are. We, 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 <laughs> no, but we, we don't have enough to give them bread, but we can give them coffee. <laughs> okay, if you live in Colombia, maybe. It may be, or Brazil, you know. Well, <laughs> there are other kinds of royal weeds and things that come to mind when you <laughs> when you think of Colombia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, what about you, Edward? So I, I've sort of given a couple of examples. What about you? What is your, like, not one thing, but, but what rules would you, you know, enact on your domain? Okay, so the only one I can think of is that all households must have one cup of coffee before nine o'clock. And if they don't, how do you enforce that? It's an ARB rule. You don't enforce that. (laughs) Oh, right. You you did say what weird and arbitrary rule. Yeah. So you don't enforce that. No, it's it's just one of those things. Okay. I know. But maybe I'll save it for the NSFW section. (laughs) Okay. I already know. Okay, cool. Cool. (laughs) All right, all right. Okay, moving on to the <sighs> delicious content that we work very hard every week to deliver to you, our wonderful listeners. Mm-hmm. And starting off with Ever- Edward's current favorite monarch. Yes, hmm? hey? the, the queen herself. Lisbeth. Um, oh, sorry, that's not the right one. <laughs> oh, Lizzie. Um no, well, is she Lisbeth? Well, no, she's 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 Lilibet, but you know who else is Lilibet? Right? Oh, Lilibet. Yeah, you mm. see, we we don't speak about those, hey? We don't speak about them. Anyway. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm the excommunicated. And... The excommunicated oh, royals, Edward. The new baby no is Lilibet. How, even no I know this, and those. you're supposed to be the fan. <laughs> I'm the fan. Okay, I don't care. Of, I don't remember shit. Literal Listen, shit. Y'all, this that is not a okay. joke. Edward can't even remember like what he ate for breakfast on the same day. I know I have bore witness to this. <laughs> okay. Whereas I can remember the most <laughs> odd meme that I sent him like three years ago. And then he sent it to me again. And I'm like, what are you doing? I've seen this. And he's like, when? I'm like, years ago. And he's like, how? <laughs> the thing is, I when you have a limited cash, okay, <laughs> you, you, you don't fill that with random <laughs> crap. <laughs> okay, so so what you're saying is I have like a terabyte of RAM and, and you, have, you're yeah. kind of still sitting in like the 64 meg lane and you need... <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, to, 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 to carry on. So so g- g- moving on from, from our question of the week is literally what I found. 
the most arbitrary rule, okay, in oh. Her Majesty's home. Oh, yes. Do you tell. Which, which is, quite literally, no one goes to bed before she does. Okay. Okay, now, no, but, okay, okay but hang on, hang on. Does that include what? napping? Like, what if you were just resting your eyes? <laughs> I don't know what it includes. I, I, as all of these weird art rules we always find, the only reason we know about this is because we had attaches and and prince um and and previous staff members speak about <clears throat> this. Um, so I don't know what the extent of this rule is. Do you think she enforces uh, it? Do they, do they say she enforces it? Um, I don't know if it's being enforced actually. Um, but it turns out that it it all began when uh, not that long ago even when. when she came and ruled um, the first time, so it was, what, 80 years ago or so? Um, um, I can't isn't remember. it only... She's celebrating her jubilee next year, so it wouldn't yes, it be 70 so years on the throne? I think it would be 70. Because so she is 90... She's going to be 90, what, 5, 96? 96. So it, and she, she came into power in 21, so wouldn't it be her 75th year on the throne? Yeah, I, I think so. so something something like that. Um, Says uh, the man who is supposed to be the fan. And I'm Listen, not even... <laughs> you know more than I about this topic anyway, even though I'm the fan. Um, I just like royals, to, to be fair. But uh, it all came in power when... Well, sorry, it, it began when she came in power all the way back because according to... And I, I the guy has a weird name. Um, Zarif Hardy, who is the coach yes. uh, uh, of the School of Etiquette in Australia. According to him, it, it was all just weird uh, for for the staff to to go to bed before the queen did uh, they felt wrong about that so that's where it began and it just became a more of a tradition so so do you think it's now. more of like a, an untold rule versus versus mm. the queen being like listen here y'all y'all going to go to bed when i tell you to go to bed <laughs> yeah i i guess so um uh, as far as i know no one has broken the rule, um, and not, none that I can find found anyway, except for Princess Diana, <gasps> who, yes, she was known to excuse herself before um, before everyone else, um, very early on. So, <laughs> I, did, let I, that just, get your did, did conspiracy Charles also going. excuse himself. Just, just it's asking. not said, and that's <laughs> it's not said. So I can only assume. Um, yeah, that, that's that's quite an odd rule. Okay, now. well, I mean, look, I I am aware that there are a lot of other really weird rules around the world, like even in America and that. So maybe not mm -hmm. for monarchies, you know. Um, I'm curious. Did you manage to find any any others? Yes, uh, one other that I found, I, I actually found a few, but not, those are stupid and oh, okay. they don't make any sense. It's probably but something like one, you can't put pickles on a sandwich or something ridiculous. Something like. stupid <laughs> like that, yeah. But this one, though, it, it says, everyone must be done eating when the queen is. So what, you got to time your bites? <laughs> no, no, I, I think... I think when she puts her fork down and says, okay, thanks, this food was lovely, you must also say, thanks, this food was lovely, and Regardless whatever of half steak you have left, <laughs> you should leave. Well, I think that's what it comes down in to. In my family, that will not be a problem, because we probably would have scoffed it all down within the first two minutes, while the queen hasn't really <laughs> cut her steak yet. <laughs> yeah, like chewing the hundredth bite, and it's weird, it's super weird, but hey. That's who. That's you, you, you know. You, you know. I, I know these are, are weird and strange things, but they're also very respectful in a, in a sense. Yeah. You know, like like this is the head of the household or the nation, right? And mm -hmm. so, it's a form of respect to like if she says she's done, then technically, you know, you should all be like, okay, thank you so much, we appreciate it, good night. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, or or I, also I for that. for the whole like you know going to bed thing, it's also very similar again. You know, if the head of the household is like, all right, I'm going to retire, everyone should also be like, oh, okay, that's that's cool. We will also retire now. Instead of yeah. instead of being, you know, having like a party in the lounge and then continuously waking up the neighbors and so on and so forth. It, it actually reminds me of Downton Abbey, which is a show that I absolutely love, um, where everyone, they have their dinners and then they have the little after dinner party. And then they all, uh, all the men go and drink whiskey in the library and all the women go and 
and do their woman thing in in whatever. <laughs> so, they talk. <laughs> they have their talk in and their smoke, side I think. room. Don't they? Don't they have cigs? Cigs. Um, they used to uh, in the latest. You know what? How about this? Really the anymore. dudes go for do whiskey, that. and the ladies went for wine. That's better. I guess, even yeah. though they, yeah, yeah. It's it's it reminds me a lot of that. So it you have to time it right, otherwise you're going to be left alone in the <laughs> dining room. I guess. Well, I mean, sometimes being left alone is not the worst thing in the world, right? <laughs> no, especially not if you're a house of of secrets. Or, or rather, and, you know, if if you are left alone, it gives you time to plan some sort of uh, hijinks, maybe you know, that's, like that's stealing exactly. the royal jewels. Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> just like Arsene <laughs> Lupin. <laughs> yep, that's a good right. segue. You are welcome. <laughs> uh, so, <clears throat> I recently finished watching um, Lupin on Netflix, or Lupin mm-hmm. for English-speaking folk, and it's it was it was alright. It's a decent show. It's basically mm-hmm. about an individual who who takes it upon himself to be invested in the Ancien Lupin um, series of books, which were created by Maurice. Oh, sorry, Maurice Leblanc in 1905 in France. And it's all about a gentleman burglar. So think of it as almost like France's answer or antithesis to the UK's 007. You know, we have the the gentleman agent. So yeah. Arsène Lupin is the gentleman burglar. So you, you could imagine that maybe 007 mm. would go after Lupin, you know, at some point in the future, or you, you know also what I mean, right? Crossover. Yeah, <laughs> also, yeah, yeah. A, a crossover event would be amazing. Actually, with that in mm. mind, and this is just a quick tidbit before I, I end up speaking about the show. Um, in in the show itself, or in the books, there's actually a character called um Herlock Sholmes, <laughs> which is obviously Gosh, the that's the, a bit on the nose. <laughs> that is the the anti-copyright version of Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Anyway, it's it. I just thought it was hilarious, um, and it's obviously because you know Arsène in the um, in the books is a gentleman burglar, and he gets pursued by this other character who's trying to get trying to you know track him down or whatever the case is. Anyway, um, the whole point of why we're talking about Arsène so much is because in the show, um, the the main character basically he 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 was brought up with these books, um, courtesy of his father. And mm. he sort of lived vicariously through the character to the point whereby the way the show is structured is <clears throat> as a young man, his father was wrongly accused for stealing the the, the jewels of, um, I think it was one of the queens, the one who she beheaded herself. Sorry, I've just forgotten her name. The French. Uh, Victoria. It well, anyway, it, 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 it doesn't matter. Yeah. Anyway, so it was, it was her necklace. And... Um, this family, the Pellegrini family, owned it. And what happens is that it goes missing, and then they, they accuse his father. And obviously, in, in, um, Lupin, or was actually, it's not, um, Ar- Arsène is his name. He, mm-hmm. he knows through a series, and I don't want to give much away, but he knows through a series of clues and things that his father left him that, mm-hmm. um, you know, he was falsely accused. And so, obviously, from a young boy growing up into an adult, he's continued to harbor that, like, I'm going to one day get revenge for what these people did to my family. And that's yeah, essentially yeah. How, how Lupin, uh, you know, how the entire story over two parts. So, each part is five episodes. So, it's not necessarily like season one and season two. Um and we only started watching after the second part had finished. And I can actually say, anyone who's interested in the show, I'm so glad that now both are available versus having to mm. watch because I've actually found that the second half was a lot more engaging than the first part. Anyway, um, it's a it's a decent enough show. And it's basically, you know, it, it follows this guy and how he goes about getting revenge for what happened to his father. And of course, there's so many OTT elements to it, you know, which sort of sometimes, you know, break away from the realism of the show, unfortunately. Um, but it's 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 nice. Uh, one thing that I suppose worked well enough for this kind of show, but for those of you who have who do listen to the podcast, you'll know I'm not a fan of procedural shows, meaning where there's maybe an overarching story, but every episode is self-contained. Now, 
Lupin does a a good job of of balancing that a little bit better than shows that we've previously spoken about in the past. Um, in the okay. sense of whereby, yes, there's an overarching narrative, um, but each episode technically could also be consumed on their own because each episode has a beginning, a middle, and an end, despite the okay. fact that there's also a lot of overarching things happening at the same time, if that makes sense. In other words, it's like, let's say you've been watching the show for like three episodes and somebody wants to see what it's like, they could just slot in. It's easy enough to to catch them up with what's going on is what I'm getting at. Okay, um, and in that sense, you know, I, I would say Loop has, it's a, it's, it's a, it's an average show. Um, it's, it borders on good every now and again, but like, it's, it's entertaining more than anything else. It's entertaining. You know, it's not going to win any awards for, you know, script or visuals or anything like that, but at the very least it's entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Then at the very least. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not exceptional by any means, I guess. No. No, I mean, look, it just, it's just little things, you know, like, you know, in Mayor of Easttown, which we spoke about a few weeks back, you know, they were not afraid to kill characters off. And yeah. that's very Games of Thrones like, but also, you know, it lends gravitas to what you're watching. Whereas, you know, in Lupin, you know that people are never dead. <laughs> you know that somehow they made it or they come back or, you know something something to 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 that effect and it's also like you you can always predict what's going to happen you know you don't have to be super smart to do it you can kind of be like oh, okay i get i know what's going to happen now and then you watch a playthrough mm. you know it's all right yeah. it's all right if you if you have nothing you know better to do and you want to watch a cool like um adventure burglar mystery thing check out lupin it's it's, uh, it's decent it's decent okay <clears throat> do you know what is exceptional though edward what hunt CRISPR. Mm, gene editing. <laughs> yes, thank you. I'm not talking about like crisp chips or anything like that. I'm talking no. about... <laughs> <laughs> no, CRISPR. That's... Now, we've often spoken about gene editing and manipulation in the past. Um, like one of our favorite episodes was last year when we spoke about chimeras. Um, yeah. And what's, what's really great about this tech is it's been in development for, for decades now. Because one of the biggest hurdles to allowing CRISPR technology to actually work for us as humans is that how do you how do you get the how do you get it into the human body? You know, mm. like how do you how do you get it to the point of of you know mass commercialization? Because technically, the gene editor you know CRISPR is all about finding something specific, and normally it's specific to one person. And then, yes. you know, whatever, how, whatever it's been developed for, like whether it's, you know, removing a certain type of cancer or maybe curing diabetes. I don't know. There's, there's so many wonderful things you can do with this. It's often mm. genetically coded for the person. All right. And so, you know, scientists have long struggled. Like, how, how do you do this? How do you how do you get these molecular scissors into the body to splice the genes in order to, you know, fix the tissues that need it and so on and so forth. Well, yeah, yeah. everybody, there's been some fantastic breakthroughs in science in this regard. And in a medical first, scientists have, been, have managed to, to inject a CRISPR drug into the bloodstream. And mm -hmm. it's been effective. I think it was, it was I think, two-thirds of the cases they noticed um, actual, you know, it actually working where it, where it went in um, and it, 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 you know, consumed or changed the genes that cause this um, fatal nerve, nerve damage and heart disease. Um, it's a form of amyloidosis. As far as I understand, actually it's called transferritin amyloidosis. Um, and okay. they're super excited about the fact that they have a vehicle of, of, in, of inserting CRISPR into the body and through the bloodstream, which is interesting in its own right, you know, and mm -hmm. and better still, it didn't have to be coded per individual. It was just a, like, I want to say a generic CRISPR, kind of like a generic antibiotic, and it's yeah. managing to do the job, which I think is just fantastic. That's um, cool. People are so happy with it that there was actually a um, researcher and cardiologist by the name of Kiran Musunuru from the University of Pennsylvania, who wasn't involved in the study, but he simply quoted as saying it exceeds all expectations 
So, you know, who, who knows? Maybe, you know, the cyberpunk future is on its way where you can just go to a vending machine and be like, you know what? I'm tired of this COVID shit. Boop. See, and there we go. <laughs> I'm automatically going into like Deus Ex territory, which is also cyberpunk. But, but like listen, listen. Nanobots and look, stuff. I can totally tell you that this CRISPR tech is amazing. But mm. you know, you know it's going to go to the rich first. You just know oh, it's going to happen. You know, they're going, to, they're going to have these... Look, as much as we want everybody to have access to this kind of... I mean, imagine a CRISPR shot. Now, now understand, we've spoken about um, vaccines in the past, specifically mRNA yeah. vaccines and how there's actually an AIDS vaccine coming along, which is really incredible in its own right. But imagine yeah. now you're suffering from a specific form of cancer, one that's already present in your body. So it's not like mm-hmm. taking a vaccine to prevent you from getting a cancer. It's more along the lines of you're already suffering from cancer. You could get possibly a CRISPR treatment that you just, you know, inject yourself with. And there we go. They The, the, the CRISPR tech goes into your body and it gene splices the cancer away. And then, sure. and, and no, but what makes it even more incredible from what I understand as well, according to this research, is how it's almost permanent. In other words, you have you have like like in this experiment where they were talking about the the transtheritin amyloidosis, right? Yeah. From their initial assessment, it just seems like it's gone. It it's it's so effective. It went in. It did what it needed to do, and these people no longer suffer from it anymore. That's cool. You know, so it's also like once off treatments. So it's a little bit different again to like um you know vaccine boosters or maybe um, antibiotics. You know. Mm-hmm. So it's just it's amazing. I mean, well if. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe right? they can get it to, to fix COVID, you know? Um, well, I mean, I do think that's a little bit different. So, yeah. you know, with the, the mRNA tech, we know that it goes in and it causes your, your T lymphocytes and your, your white blood cells to, you know, genetically take the, the spike protein code, like to keep that secret key with them so that they can manufacture mm. antibodies when it, the infection comes in. I think yeah. CRISPR is a little bit different. I don't know. Well, you never know. Maybe you could get a CRISPR um, injection of some kind that maybe immediately makes your body able to destroy COVID and maybe all other diseases. Maybe not just COVID, you know, maybe. like a super immune system. Maybe. I mean, I, I don't cool. know. I'm thinking more along the, along the lines of like um, taking a, a CRISPR treatment to change your eye color. Or maybe taking CRISPR. Now, imagine, Im- imagine this now. Yes, imagine this now for uh, transgender people. What if? Okay, maybe maybe this is 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 maybe I'm thinking too far ahead, right? Because or maybe mm. my understanding of CRISPR isn't as as good as it is. But what if it was more along the lines of you could take a CRISPR injection and it would it would go through and maybe you know make your body change the hormones it produces to an extent. Or maybe one CRISPR shot is all you need to stop testosterone, therefore making it much easier for you to go into estrogen. You know, stuff like that. Stuff like that. Maybe, yeah. You know? Like or, or, it just or, or, or better yet, maybe you um broke your back and they could use CRISPR tech to to re-engage the, the, the necessary nerves. It's it's really incredible. It's just we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I mean it opens the door for many other technologies, I would say. Well, yes, so, the, the CRISPR in 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 addition to mRNA, because I mean technically yeah. it uses that as well. You know, they're all kind of like interspersed together, and the future is exciting. It, as you said, you know, Deus Ex and and uh, cyberpunk ourselves into oblivion. <laughs> Actually, no, yeah. not oblivion into Starfield. A little, ah. little gamer joke <laughs> there for for those of you <laughs> who know what we're talking about. Now, with this in mind, and of course, we have spoken about COVID already, Edward, Mm -hmm. you found something about COVID clues that have been in plain sight all this time? Yeah, might be. That might Ah, be in plain sight. ah. So, so, yeah, I found this cool little post where the Natural Museum, the the Natural History Museum, I think this is in America, I'm not sure... um, even though this came from Telegraph, they, they didn't really mention mm-hmm. where it's located. Anyway, uh, maybe it's something that we should just know. It's they found in their in their um, archives a treasure trove of bats, skulls, and and pickled bats, and perfectly preserved bats from like 
years and years and years people ago. have been wanting to be vampires for a long time yes <laughs> and now you're wondering why i'm on this gothic binge um it, it's weird um i number one we don't know why the bats were in the the museum archives in the first place but apparently it's it's such a huge find um they say it's roughly 12,000 samples from three major bat families wow. were stored in the vaults. Um, now, these date back 300 years, back to the British Empire. Oh, which th- is this is sounding massive. more like vampirism. The more you... <laughs> more, more like vampire like <laughs> studies than actual COVID <laughs> studies. Um, but the, they, scientists today obviously they are trying to figure out if they can find coronavirus samples within these bats now as we all know um, bats carry the coronavirus they are a natural vessel for the coronavirus now if they can find samples of coronavirus in these bats um they might even figure out the current coronavirus uh, covid-19 this, i'm thinking um, the and opposite its origins i'm thinking they're going to take out these bats from 300 years ago play around with whatever mm-hmm. covid they've got and then release a new strain that's Listen, that's what <laughs> that's a I mean, big fear of my own so. <laughs> i mean i'm all like can y'all just leave it alone please <laughs> because... you're like just let them the vaccines do their work and let's forget about all of this. I mean, I <laughs> like, understand why they're doing it, all right? But at yeah. the same time, I'm a bit like, we've watched enough movies to know this is not going to end mm-hmm. well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, listen, <laughs> you say this and you you are like supporting financially <laughs> opening up the Jurassic Park or Listen, whatever, that's in real different. Life. <laughs> okay. How? Because, because genetically engineering a dinosaur is not the same as trying to genetically re-engineer an old virus to make a new cure okay that be end of days shit <laughs> they're all innovation it's different flavors that's all it is <laughs> it's well that's all it is speaking speaking of end of days um <laughs> yeah have you watched the original a quiet place yeah not yet actually it's oh, on you haven't list. Okay, well, no, sorry so, for so you, Edward, recently, because I watched A Quiet Place Part 2, and I'm now going to talk about it. <laughs> that's fine. I, I actually know what it's all about. So okay, okay, fine. fair enough, yeah. fair enough. So you, back on the end of days scenario, right? So uh, just a, a quick recap of the first film. They, they don't really tell you much about what happens. You just know that there are these creatures that are now on land, and they respond to sound. And they, they very much look like um, a mix between... Uh, it's the Stranger Things creatures mixed with those from The Last of Us. Um, yeah. And they use like echolocation. And actually, weirdly, yeah. they kind of look like the bats that you have in this image here, um, which we will obviously link in the show notes. And so in the first film, it's all about um, John Krasinski and his family, which consists of Emily Blunt, M- Millicent Simmons, and Noah Jupe. And then, of course, the baby character, which gets killed and then they have another one. So I don't know what the person <laughs> is. Anyway. The, the, so, the inconsequential irrelevant, character. Irrelevant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like first five minutes dead. So whatever. <laughs> um, so the, the, the first film obviously then deals around um, their life in this new reality where, you know, you have to be absolutely silent because these mm. creatures respond to any sound. Like, like, like it's so heightened. Like me going <clears throat> would probably get me killed. Okay. So... Yeah, not, not a good thing with me and my allergies. I, I'd be dead. Nope. Anyway. Um, yep. <laughs> uh, One of those five minutes and done characters. Yes. <laughs> so the, the, the first film is all about this family and you watch them try and survive. And that's what the first film is about. And it's excellent. Specifically because it's, it's so unusual in its use of sound. Essentially, the film is a silent film. Because this family, thanks to the daughter played by Millicent Simmons is um, she's deaf, she's hard of hearing. So the entire family knows sign language. So therefore, despite not being able to make any sounds whatsoever, they can still communicate. Um, and the first one, it's, it's excellent. And you know, you see how they go through these things and eventually they discover a way to defeat these monsters. And it's all thanks to the daughter's hearing aid, which just so happens that when it comes, you know, when you put two mics together, you get that like unbearable, like screeching noise, you know, like thing. Anyway, like, yeah, it's, it's very, very, very yeah. high pitch, very high pitch. And that causes these creatures to 
go crazy and you can then you can then shoot them because essentially their outer their outer scales are impenetrable so it doesn't matter what okay. you use they cannot be destroyed but when they're echolocating they have to open up their skulls to for the ears to sense and so when they find out that by turning it to this frequency it causes their heads to like you know that the these creatures can't interpret it so they constantly you know like it's 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 unbearable it's, for them yeah it, yeah, it yeah. allows you to like you can you can then shoot them in the head or stab them in the head or whatever and you can kill them mm. so that's what happens in the first film now the second film a quiet place part 2 it it takes place almost it's minutes it's minutes after the first one ends oh. all right okay. um, you know whereby unfortunately john krasinski is dead um you know he, that was the big sort of impactful moment that really brought the that brings the first film together all right mm. um so obviously now the family has to survive without him and so you know obviously they have this this they know how to deal with the creatures now which is really good and yeah. what it, it, the movie starts off very strong because one of the best parts one of the best things that they could have done and they did do was they went back to d day so the film actually shows you how, where how these it, creatures came from how it happened um, now now they don't give you a lot they only they just give you just a, enough for you to be like whoa okay so mm. they're aliens all right that's the, <laughs> the the major just of the, well, so, so they're not kaiju they didn't come from the earth or, or anything like that all right what, did they come from a meteorite or did they just it's, land it's unexplained so oh, okay. it, it looks like it could have been a meteorite because the way that it oh, enters okay. the atmosphere is just massive and it's like burning up or whatever the case is oh, so okay. so maybe these were are like parasites in space you know and uh, they just kind of like aliens because you know that the xenomorphs yeah, yeah, are like yeah. that as well right anyway yeah, they it, just the, the, yeah. the, these creatures are are horrific in 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 many many respects and they 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 do like they move like bats slash xenomorphs anyway they're they're terrifying um mm. so the the film like i said it takes place straight after the first one um they do a great job of of showcasing what happened in those early days which is really really cool to see and then they introduce Cillian Murphy who is an actor known for Peaky Blinders as well as yep. being the scarecrow in Christopher Nolan's Batman movies mm. and it's obvious he's going to be a main character because he's introduced in one of the flashbacks and you're like well there's only one other reason why you'd have a famous person in a flashback <laughs> so so you know eventually um the mother and the kids as they're they're trying to survive they run into him um he obviously has a like a very sad back story and then what happens is i don't want to i'm not going to give the movie away but there's a lot of yeah, yeah, certain yeah. things happen and then they they ha- uh they need to go to a place to see if it's a sanctuary or not for humanity um and in many respects the more i watched it the more i was like this is the last of us you know it is it specifically because they gets they gets to a point where uh, Millicent Simmons's character and um Cillian Murphy go on their own adventure and that's kind of like Joel and Ellie you know and how they had to well i mean you know they had they had to make it through to get to what is possible human salvation you know and they have the cure you know in Joel and Ellie well Ellie was the cure and then in this movie um Millicent Simmons has the way to defeat them you know because of her hearing aid anyway it's 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 a, it's a it's a good film um there are a lot of jump scares which i do not appreciate okay i'm just saying but it's it's good um it was it was yeah i i i enjoyed it it's very tense very good cinematography great use of audio and sound you know specifically okay. where um every time uh simmons's character loses a hearing aid the sound just dies so you hear nothing you only watch and it just builds a terrible tension because you know That's she cool. can't hear now you yeah. can't hear and you can see the creatures approaching her you know That's it's cool. it's 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 just done very well and um if you enjoy the first film you will absolutely enjoy the second one i i have heard rumors of maybe there being a part 3 although uh, truthfully i didn't even know there would be a part 2 you know mm. but i'm glad that there was but also you know they've really fleshed out how it's you know they've got the way of killing these creatures as so a really a part 3 wouldn't be worth it you know they've summed yeah, up the yeah. story quite nicely in my personal opinion so yeah um you know it's 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 good watch it it's i think it's available for for purchase 
um you know i have a lot of subscriptions so i just watched it that way <laughs> yeah just via netflix <laughs> it's, not, it's not actually on netflix yet oh, um, but it's on like itunes movie store and that i don't know about the south african one because i have a us oh, account okay. but anyway oh, okay. um now on top of the, this because of the aliens yeah. that we, well, we now know they're aliens right uh, yeah, yeah. You have something called ancient crustaceans, and it makes me—it really makes me think a little bit about what these creatures were like in the last of. Uh, in oh, you see, look at me. I'm really. I can't help it. It was like a last of. It's a last of us. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah. For real. Well, th- well. On that note, for <clears throat> those who don't know yet, they are making a last of us series. TV so. show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, be yeah. So good. So, I think it might be very, very good. I um, honestly yes. hope so. Anyway, back to ancient crustaceans, Edward. Yeah, so do, do tell, do tell. Am I going to get excited? Are we, are we, are we getting find. like dinosaurs from crustaceans, or what, what is happening here? No, <laughs> <laughs> maybe <laughs> I don't know. So they found, well, scientists have found a huge colony of crustaceans, um, crab-like fish creatures, in cl- in tomb. Um, underneath the seabed. I see that you wrote so, here in Kunming, China. I read that it's coming, yes. China. I'm sorry, we're not even at that section yet, but anyway. Of course you did. <laughs> um, yeah, underneath the seabed near Kunming, China. Now, these, uh, the, the reason why these made the news is because they date back almost an aeon. Um, wow. It's half, uh, half an aeon, 500 million years ago back to the cambrian period which is basically the the period where where all life on earth we're still in the sea um if we believe in uh, the evolution of the theory of evolution yes if you believe in science yes <laughs> so um uh, to, to, to put that in perspective the the uh, what is it the the not the cambrian period the the, the triassic uh, the Triassic period, thank you. I couldn't find that in my notes. You're welcome. <laughs> the, the Triassic, uh, I always wanted to say Jurassic, but that's actually it's an different, even yeah. closer period. Yeah, yeah. The Triassic period, which is the first dinosaur period, that was only 251 million years ago. Only. So, <laughs> only. <laughs> only. So, this is this is double that extra back. Um, and they found more than 2,800 fossil specimens wow. in, this, in this colony, of which, uh, sorry, from 118 specimens, of which I think it says 17 of those are brand new specimens we haven't ever seen before. Yes, yes. Um, That's incredible. Wow. Yes. And I see, I see here that they're the modern day ancestors of jellyfish, insects, crustaceans, worms, trilobites, and sponges. Exactly. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, the, the, Ooh, it's so Edward, weird. this is so good. You, yeah. They, what they even had soft tissue. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. This is an you amazing see, find. Now, this is the kind of thing that that I don't mind them looking into and reverse engineering. So stay away Ooh. from the bats. Do this. Do take this. Do, do the sponges, the sea sponges. <laughs> yeah. and, or, or, and the or we're gonna have like kaiju before you know. <laughs> Well, when you think trilobite, you obviously think that little worm thing. Um, that immediately makes me think of Death Stranding, where well, you eat the trilobites. That, no, that, that makes me think of Pokemon, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> of course it makes you think of Pokemon. Listen, I love this here. Um, I see here that um, the, 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 they're so well preserved. preserved. They actually have yeah. 3D eyes. Yes, the 3D eyes and soft tissue. You see, well, and, and that's incredible to me because I know that even today, science cannot really explain the evolution of the eye. So yeah. this is amazing. This is amazing. Yeah. It, it could very well lead to new and ex- great scientific discoveries. Yeah. Um, and, and of those, the 17, the, the 17 new species are actually in their infant years, have they found out. So, which okay, so means they didn't might just find, find more... species. Yeah, they actually found the life. Uh, yes, you know, they found a, um, they call it a nursery. They found a nursery colony, which means all these different species of animal, uh, well, crustaceans, <laughs> came together in this in this one spot and bred and um, created new life in this one spot. And they don't know how, but for some reason, an, an avalanche of sediment, which is just sand, mm-hmm. rock, whatever, 
it came down and entombed, entombed them all and you know, basically buried them all alive. This is the, the um, interesting thing about every time there's some sort of archaeological discovery, right? Like yeah. one of the big ones a couple of years back was how they found a perfectly encapsulated and preserved um, Tyrannosaurus Rex and Triceratops fighting. So you just mm. have to wonder to yourself, what happened that was so quick and extreme that it preserved yeah. their mid battle. Now, that a little bit of that leads me to um, remember what what happened in Pompeii, because uh, I've I have in the in the past I was privileged enough to have gone and visited Pompeii, and it's the, one of the most incredible archaeological locations because it's when the the volcano in Pompeii erupted, and it was yeah. so quick and so fast that people were literally encased in ash, like just like it, you know, like the, with, with, in in seconds. So See, there's still that's... people doing like normal things and they're just like in case. So like, you know, that obviously makes sense then. You know, if that could happen in more recent times, I mean, we only took a couple of hundred years. So of course, millennia ago, you know, it could have happened as well. But even then, it, it boggles the mind how something happens that quickly. Like even lava and magma, mm. that's that's a very thick substance. Even if it rains on you, it's, it's not going to be instant, is it? Apparently it is. Well, but, no, the, you know? so like, Magma, that's a bit different because that's molten. Yeah. So anything that goes in yeah. that's going to get destroyed. However, however, what they do say about um, the the ash from a volcano is that it, it hardens like concrete and within seconds. Oh. So I suppose it's a little bit different, you know, also, you know, because remember the, the, mm. the ash has a whole lot of stuff in it, like there's acids and there's chemicals and it's not just ash, you know? Yeah. So I think when it combines with water, maybe it just becomes this like instant setting concrete like material. Of maybe. course, I'm speaking, you know, ba- all conjecture. We we need to know a bit more about this. Basically, how when you mix water and lava in Minecraft, you get obsidian. Okay. Let's you go. Know, let's instant, go with that. Instant let, obsidian. Let's go with that. <laughs> now back to your your whole like crustacean thing. It, these yeah. make me think of claxosaurs. Claxosaurs. Yes. Okay. What is now, that? Now, they're not real. So let me tell you about an anime called Darling in the Franks. Klaxosaurus. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. seriously, Klaxosaurus. So this was courtesy of Tegan in Australia, who sent this through and was like, look, you, you know, he knows that I like Neon Genesis Evangelion. And he was like, you should check out Darling in the Franks. And he actually submitted this months ago. So I finally got around to it. And it's pretty cool. So... I don't really know um, genres of anime very well, um, but mm. my understanding is that this is considered mecha. Yeah. Um, mecha. Now, Darling in the Franks is terribly confusing. <laughs> so, so I'm going to, like most anime, right? Now, I will, mm. I will do my best to try and explain what it's about so that if you're interested, you can watch it. What I will say, though, is I thought that it was, it was good. Um, it's by no means exceptional because Neon Genesis Evangelion is exceptional in my personal opinion. Of course, everybody's tastes may differ. And with that in mind, it's very clear how Darling in the Franks has taken a lot of inspiration from Neon Genesis, from the way that the, the Franks, which are the giant mechazoids, are piloted through to the claxosaurs that they fight, um, you know, through to a lot of religious overtones and undertones. There's a lot of Neon Genesis in the show, and maybe that's why mm. I actually enjoyed it. Now, with that aside, and maybe I just don't consume enough anime, I did find it a, a little bit bordering on being pervy for a lot of, for, for not a lot of the things, but like, so he has a, he has a, look, at least initially, at least initially within the first few episodes. And that's only because you don't really know what's going on. But as the show evolves and it's explained why things are the way that they are, you can kind of be like, oh, I get it now. I get it now. So in the show, they're on Earth. And Mm -hmm. weirdly enough, um, no one lives on the surface of the planet anymore. This is because Mm -hmm. humanity has been relegated to these giant plantation type um, mega structures which move around the earth instead and in with this in mind um, adults and children are separated and children are not allowed to 
be around adults, nor are they allowed to enter the city where adults live. All right. All of this is very weird and, and odd in the beginning, but later on, as the show progresses, they do explain a lot of it. Now, I don't want to do that because part and parcel of the show is finding out these massive revelations. Okay. Mm. Now, I'll try my best to speak around it, though. Now, with this in mind, what's happened is humanity has been attacked by what they call, they call klaxosaurs. Okay, which which are kind of like the angels from Neon Genesis. Okay, but okay. these, however, come from the earth, from under the earth, and they always attack whenever humanity is excavating magma, because that's how they power everything using magma technology and magma power. All right. Okay. Now, obviously, you know, there's there's far more to it than that, but anyway. Um. So, in order to combat the Klaxosaurs, the Franks are made. So these are giant mecha suits. However, yeah. in order to ride a Franks, there must be a male-female partnership. Okay. okay. So this is where the story then goes to these children where they all are automatically partnered as male-female, male-female. And the whole point of you as a child is to serve a purpose. And your purpose is to defeat the Klaxosaurs. And if you mm. can't make that purpose, in other words, if let's say you've been selected to, to ride a Franks and you don't genetically or sub or mindfully match with the other partner one of you will be terminated and it's it's quite it's quite intense it's quite an intense you know sort of look at things um and then the, the story oh, i've forgotten all of their names now because they all they go by code numbers which is so weird because they ha- although they have names i can only remember their code numbers so hero oh, it's like- hero is code 016 and then okay. um iota who actually goes by 002 and then all of the other kids also have numbers as well. So I'm not really going to talk about mm. all of those numbers. But they all form part of a unique team from Plantation 13. And okay. they're all under the watchful eye of a particular doctor who is testing them the whole time. And then it, then the show then progresses and expands about how, you know, the kids don't know anything about the world. They don't know about what it is to reach puberty. They don't know what kissing is or sex or anything like that. They're very much kept naive for a for a reason and i don't want to say what those reasons are but i suppose i can to an extent because it's not a major spoiler but essentially humanity has reached a point of not needing reproductive organs anymore but in order to pilot the franks you need to have reproductive organs i know that sounds really weird (laughs) you might be like what the hell but it all makes sense when you if you watch the show like it's all revealed later on now that whole like pervy part that i was talking about which is unusual for me because although i've enjoyed a lot of anime um, with like the there's one one on Netflix to do with cards. I've forgotten the name now. That's very subtle, you know. Sometimes they'll show mm. an ass or some boobs or whatever. But in this one, like one of the most blatant forms of like for real, seriously, is how the riders have to ride the Franks, and that's essentially like whereby the the female character has to form the doggy style position, and then the guy is from behind, and that's how you drive the Franks. <laughs> really for real i'm not making it up (laughs) and then they have all of these like terms like you know and then it's like the innuendo is so strong so like like when hero was connecting with 002 for the first time and she's all like you know like in the front and he's like i'm going deeper into you i can feel it and i'm just like oh my gosh i just i can't it's too like it's so on the the nose on on, you know (laughs) on the chin on the chin but if you can get past those first like 10 to 15 episodes that's when you they start really revealing what is going on the true identity of the klaxosaurs the true reasoning behind why you need male and female pairs what's actually happened to the human race the truth behind magma technology um you know is there more to what's going on here are there aliens involved it's it gets very 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 good and extremely complicated and i think maybe my favorite part about it is how despite everything, how despite everything, it's all about love at the end of the day. It's all about wow. how, no, not that kind of love. Okay, it's all about, <laughs> about how love conquers all. And I think that's a really beautiful message. Okay. <laughs> so okay. That's, that's that, you know, this whole like um, sort of cyberpunk desolate future. Um, and if you want to check it out, check it out. Also, also, this is just a quick one. Darling in the Franks is is a literal description of the main character <laughs> because in the show, oh, in the show, 002 calls Hero her darling. 
And so, uh. darling, in the Franks, in the Franks of Mecca. Uh, do you get it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, that came to me throughout the show, and I just, I love that, that little part of it. Um, okay. Anyway, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a decent, decent anime. It, I think, I don't know if you'd like it. I think if you like Mechas, you'll probably enjoy this. If I'd not, probably maybe not, you know. Um, yeah. Now, something I know that you didn't enjoy was yeah, yeah, yeah. parkouring around some sort of cyberpunk arena, right? Nah, building. <laughs> cyberpunk building. Oh, is it a building? But I thought there were more levels to it. No, it's a dread-like okay. tower Okay, we're, we're talking about a game called Ghost Runner. Um, yeah. And Edward reviewed the game recently on Nintendo Switch, although it is available on other platforms. So, Ed, tell us about this dread-like structure that you need to parkour around and whether or not it is worth your moolah. I can't tell you much about the structure because it's never explained. Um, <laughs> I can't tell you much about the story because it's half explained. Mm. Um, Sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's oh, it's must play if you hate yourself. Um, it's just... Okay, so the game is all about you are this guy called Ghost Runner and you you don't have your memory anymore. It's It's been lost. Um, you've got amnesia as most and many games start. Okay, so that's not the issue. Um, but you know you need to get to the top where this Mara, this this evil villain is. You know he's evil. You're never explained why he's evil. Um, but you need to go and fight him to regain your memory or something to that extent. Okay. <laughs> um, and in t- to do this, you are you have to go through the floors of the building, uh, which is the stages, which they act as the stages of the of the game. Um, and to do this, you also parkour. Think Mirror's Edge meets meets Blade Runner, I guess, or Cyberpunk, um, or Katana Zero. Actually, that's a good one. It's Katana Zero was a was a side scrolling okay. game, much similar to this one. Um, so you can you, you, everything one shot you. You're very very fragile. You are this ninja character, so you have to find. I mean, I mean but that's the whole point, about, right? So the, yeah. the, the game is built around repetition. Pretty much. So so essentially, just like in Mirror's Edge, you, you run from point A to point B as fast as you can, and you take out all the guys along the way, um, which you didn't do in Mirror's Edge, but I, I digress. <laughs> um, in order to take them out, um, you have to swipe at them with your katana. Sometimes you get abilities, sometimes you get pickups that help you along the way. Um, you don't always need to take them out, I believe, um, but you get extra points if you do, because at the end of the day, you get points for, for finishing up a mission. I guess that's that's to encourage re- um, replayability. Replayability, Because yeah. there is no re- there, there is no real replayability in this game. You you repeat the same stage every minute because they go, you, they go by quickly, over and over and over again until you get past this. Um, but it's is it frustrating though? Yes, I, it can. The, the reason why I bring this up is because do you remember when yeah. I spoke about flowing lights, that mm-hmm. that really small indie arcade game where you play as like mm-hmm. this the ship and then you you go through. So to me, that game was built around repetition. The difference though, the difference though, mm. was that it was so rewarding to find the solution. And once you had the solution, you could push through, and then your name would go into a leaderboard. So you felt like See, it was an accomplishment. Does this game See, have anything like that? Uh, okay, so so let me put it this way: this game encourages ex- ex- um, experimentation. It it actively encourages you to. There's a pickup. There's an ability. Together, they make you dash quicker, or they make you jump f- further. Um, the game gives you all these options. Okay, um, different options, different things to do that you can do to get around this one guy that keeps shooting you <laughs> in the face with his shotgun. Um, but for some inexplicable reason, sometimes she, in, or not sometimes, um, experimenting is is kind of doing the the uh, is counter productive to what you're meant to do. Um, which is just just run up to the guy and stab him in the neck and finish the, the mission. Um it, it's it's a very, very weird thing where you might feel in in games like like Dark Souls, for instance, where you keep trying, you keep trying, you keep trying, and you finally 
recognize, you finally figure out the boss's maneuvers. You finally figure out how fast you need to be, how slow you need to mm. be. Sorry. It, it feels rewarding when, when you beat this boss. In Ghost Runner, the, the, the reward doesn't exist. The re, literally, the, the, the reward is finishing the mission and, go, and carrying on with the story. Oh. Because it's... it's uh, oh, I see. So it's actually more frustrating because... Yes. Because, so, so generally, 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 in games that encourage repetition... If you yeah. see something to pick up, you generally meant to pick it up. But yes. what I'm hearing here is if you do that, that could potentially cause you to fail the level, forcing yes. you to so, replay it, but this time to not pick it up, the ability. But that's essentially it. So, so imagine you're, you're in the stage now for the 10th stage. And for the first time ever, you get this pick up to be able to dash quicker. Mm. Okay. So, so now you're able to tap. Why more and more and more in order to to dash 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 in instead of just dash and wait a bit of dash, so now you can do this, and automatically you think, oh, you need this to get past this mission because that's how games work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Game design is literally there's a thing it hints towards what you need to do. Now you use this dash 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 dash, and you you just can't because the moment you dash quick uh, too quickly, there's a guy around the corner posed to shoot you in the head immediately. Okay. So instead, don't pick it up. Just go through this mission slow as shit, <laughs> as always, and you'll be able to to pass it. No worries. And in for some reason, um, the games like this, the reward comes in when you when you are able to figure out which combinations of which pickups and abilities you mm-hmm. need to use. Because you you feel good. You feel like you've accomplished something. In this game, it's like no. You've, you you were too dumb to figure this out. Um, it, it it's frustrating. It's no re- okay, it's well, not rewarding at all. That's unfortunate. Now, yeah. Do you think it's like this on all platforms, or would it be mm. just on the one that you're playing on? Well, um, I actually played a little bit of it on console on on Xbox One, and I've also seen a lot of it on YouTube and the like. Mm. And it as something you you can watch. It looks phenomenal. It looks quick. It looks fast-paced. Um, I haven't seen people playing the game through um, on console. Um, yeah. <laughs> featuring Cobalt. Uh, I haven't seen people playing on on console get as frustrated as I've seen people play it on Switch, um, including myself. Um, and well, you mean just other think, consoles, not... Uh, yes, yeah. other consoles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, specifically PlayStation 4 and Xbox. It's apparently on PC as well, but I, have, I, haven't, I haven't even seen gameplay on PC yet. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's just weird. And on top of that, um, bringing, bringing it around back to the Switch, it runs badly. It runs very, very poorly. You see, I think um, that... <laughs> Kid, I mean, it's unfortunate to hear that the game is not as great as it, it is, but I think maybe even yeah. that's why your experience was even worse. Could be. Because, yeah. you know, my understanding is the game is very much a precision, a precision style yes. shooter, right? So if yeah. you have poor performance from like frame rate instability and so on and so forth, mm-hmm. then you're going to miss the jumps. You're going to miss yeah. the, whatever you need to do. Yeah, so essentially the game runs... Uh, I'm, I'm not sensitive to, to frame rate drops at all, but, mm. but they are noticeable in this one. So, uh, and on the Switch Lite, you, you see this, and now you have to get used to the visual cues, okay? Um, now, precision games with visual cue, cues are usually like, do this now. Yeah. Now, there, yeah, yeah. there is no second after, no, it, it's, it's unforgiving. Now, imagine that with a drop frame or two every single time. Yeah. So you you have to get used to this. Okay, now you're used to this. And now they keep giving you new pickups, which you evidently don't need. But now you 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 pick them up and you train yourself to get used to the new pickup with the visual cues. And then all of that just to learn an hour early uh, later that you don't need them. So now I have to unlearn them again. It's frustrating, it's it's bad. I would say if you want to pick up this game, pick it up on on any other console except Switch. But even then, yeah, even, even then, then, I might say don't bother. It, it's lackluster story. The story is only there. It's it's basically like a a, a porno story. It, it's just <laughs> there to be there. It's it it has no substance. Okay. Um, well, okay, so yeah, it's disappointing. It's disappointing. 
to well, say the least, yeah. Other than the fact that the game is disappointing, Ed, do you want to know <laughs> which kinds of people in the entertainment industry are also rather disappointed at the moment? What is which kinds of people are those times? Voice over artists. How so? <laughs> <laughs> Right. Now, we've spoken yeah. about deep fakes a lot in the past and how, yeah. you know, you can train these programs to do voices and to do faces and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Well, there is currently an unofficial Witcher 3 mod called A Night to Remember, which yeah. which takes place canonically, although it's not really part of the canon because it's an unofficial mod. Um, it takes place after the official expansion Blood and Wine. Now, okay. it might be a mod, but the thing is, the developer has managed to create new voice lines. And everybody's like, how the hell did you do this? I mean, like, did you, did you get the, the original artist to revoice Gerald? Um, and if, if those of you don't know, the guy's name is Doug Cockles. Great surname. And um, it turns out, it turns out, that the modder is using um, AI. In particular, it's called Cyber Voice, and it's been developed by the the Russia-based Mind Simulation Lab. And what he did is he went and he took all of Gerald's lines, he fed them to the AI, and boom, Bob's your uncle. He now has fully fleshed voice lines for his mod. That's cool. That's cool. So, so this is where, so as a gamer and somebody who looks at the ingenuity of a somebody at home who developed a mod, I think this is phenomenal because, you know, making mods is a, a labor of love. Uh, Edward mm-hmm. actually wrote the most incredible posts about mods, which we're going to save for a future episode. So we will definitely discuss this more in the near future. And it's just, you know, somebody who's developing it on their own might not have the resources to do things like hire the voice actors and actresses again. Yeah. But then again, you know, that's where the two sides of the coin, you know, exists. So just to put it out there, and I know we mentioned this before, you know, Robin Williams had a clause in his will whereby no one was allowed to use his likeness or voice again in the future, no matter what. Yep. Okay. So what's interesting with this is, AI is advancing. AI is not going anywhere. So could this potentially mean that somebody who relies on income from being a voiceover artist has now technically had their trademarked voice, or if you can even call it trademark, rather their uh, performance with that voice is now being reused without their consent? You see, this is where... Mm it becomes very much like a a double-edged sword. You know, it's awesome. The technology is phenomenal. But if it's misused, if it's misappropriated, you know, I would like to think that maybe in the future, um, if things like this become more mainstream. So I say that because Bethesda is actually using an AI at the moment to help develop uh, newer titles, whereby they use AI voices to help uh, read back the, the, the lines and um, their scripts, you know, because it's cheaper than going and hiring somebody and then it turns out that that storyline didn't work and then you have to get them to re-record, yeah. all right? So, like, from that practical perspective, I totally understand why you use AI voices. But now, imagine now, like what this guy did, this, this modder, imagine now a company doing that but with actual voices. You would never really need to hire somebody again to do voice lines if the AI can do it for you. Now, of course... May, hopefully in the future you would then compensate the person who was originally behind that voice exactly like i was going to say if this happens le- number one it seems like this ai in particular it needs a sample voice correct correct so so if you're going to use let's say i don't know travis willingham uh, as a sample voice who's also a voice actor um he plays all the thors in everything by the way so you might f- be familiar with his voice Let's say they use his sample voice. Then in in terms of compensation, I would say, according to the Voice Guild of America, um, I believe all voice actors need to be paid per hour and the same rates. So instead of him just coming in and doing his performance, they just pay him for an hour's work per, like, let's say, 200 words um, in the AI is equal to... 
an hour's work. I, I would or something think that's to that effect. a good yeah, compensation. I, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. yeah. So now there's a little bit more to this. So the, the Mind Simulation Lab have mentioned how um, only if an artist has actually signed over with them can the yeah. voice then be used for commercial purposes. So obviously uh-huh. this is just a mod, right? So anybody can yeah. use whatever voice they want. So this guy is not getting money from this. So mm-hmm. because he's not earning anything, you know, therefore I guess the voiceover artist shouldn't get anything either, you know? Mm. But then it becomes that whole thing of, but is it, is, does it make it right though? Even so. Yeah. You see, you know, just because a tech exists, does it really mean that people should be using other people's voices? You see, yeah, it's 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 a we're, we're moving into a very 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 interesting future, you know, whereby it's not just voices, but it's also going to be likeness. I mean, I mean, mm-hmm. look at how um, Marvel has used, you know, like um, Robert Downey Jr.'s likeness as a young man, you know, in yeah. the films. You know that I mean, sure, he obviously signed up for those, but like, what if you have a contract that allows you to be digitally rendered, voice and face? Or, or we, we imagine this rather, imagine you go and you read thousands and thousands of voice lines and you put them into some AI database. Mm. You would then never need to really work again if you just get royalties yeah. from people taking your likeness. Exactly. Hey? Especially if you work remotely. Isn't, yeah. But isn't that interesting? You know? Mm. So like, I, I'm seeing more benefits to this really. But then again, at the same time, you know that somebody nefarious somewhere, somewhere, somehow is going to, just like they did with the Queen earlier this year for her Christmas speech. The, some You saw that, right? Mm, I don't recall. Okay, we, we have discussed this. But what they did yeah, is they, they, they used um, deep fakes for her face and her voice to make a completely different speech to the one she actually gave. Oh, yes. yes. I remember now. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yes, yeah. Yes. yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting. And maybe... It's it, very it, interesting. Maybe... This will lead us to languages that blow our minds. NSFW. I guess. Hey, I did my best to lead that into <laughs> the next section, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I suppose you could do that. Um, it's, it's a weird future. Uh, one that we might need to figure out what kind of languages people speak um, in terms of sex. Now, not this particular thing that I found is not so much about actual language. And this is different language. to whispering gaming, entertainment, technology, lifestyle in people's oh, ears. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Um, if you, if so, you don't know what we're talking about, please go back and listen to last week's episode, which was episode 62, season two, episode 20. I laughed myself sick because Edward dropped <laughs> the most hilarious <laughs> four words See, to to good lovemaking. <laughs> well, it is, isn't it, dear viewer and reader and listener? Okay, I'm sorry, Edward. Okay, so, okay bring it back. Bring it back. So tell us what so, are so, these languages of mind blowing pumping that you want to discuss? Okay, so so as we all know, uh, l- that was my iPad. As we all know, love language. Uh, the lang- um, Everyone has their own le- love language. Okay, so. For many people, that's basically cooking. For others, that's just being kind all the time. Um, we all have different love languages. It's what they, that, what they call it. So, <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, like okay. To an extent, I get this, but I mean, is that really a love language? Isn't that really just how different people are than it being a language to love? Well, yeah, like. The, the the whole point behind love language is that that's how you express your love to someone. Like someone wouldn't ever tell you they love you, but they'll exclusively make you food. They'll exclusively be nice to you. That kind of thing. It's it's difficult to explain now, but basically, a, a good example is that um, it would, I you can people. use us. So I am a gift giver. I, yes. Because it, to me, it means something. And the, when I give something to somebody, it's because I put thought behind it. It's not just yes, for the sake that's... of doing it. But then you are not. No. And that always cuts <laughs> me deeply. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Um, yeah. That, that's, that's a good example, actually. Um, and now, <laughs> Edward Jaya. doesn't have a love language. 
I don't know that I do. Oh, no, you do, um, It's chicken nuggets. No, I love chicken nuggets. I don't know. <laughs> I won't give any, someone else my chicken nuggets. So <laughs> that's a hate language. Okay. <laughs> I will cut you if you take my nuggets. Um, <laughs> okay. So according to this woman named Jaya, who is apparently the world's leading somatic sexologist. She just had to okay? throw in somatic there. Just to... Of course it's had to throw in. <laughs> Um, she says there are different patterns of arousal, all of which can be sorted into the five main groups. She calls these blueprints. Now, I don't know why the hell she calls it blueprints, but okay, let's, let's okay. humor her for okay, a second. Let's go. Let's go with it. So, uh, in her experience, a life coach, um, oh. because the, the article <laughs> I'm going to link to, okay, apparently she's, she's gone down a, a heavy road of, of challenge. Okay. Because she could never figure out how to help her her clients. Now, how she became a life coach in the first place, she couldn't do this. I, I don't know. <laughs> this is, this um, is all, I'm, I'm sitting here going, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But apparently through her struggles, she figured out that, no, she's she's had the wrong approach. She needs to figure out what the different kind of, um, what do you call it? Blueprints, Blueprints are, you know, um, like and I, I don't want to, I don't want to trash this, you know, too much. That's just my initial gut is being like, ugh, you know. But like, uh, of course, you know, always. You see that? Yeah. See what you said just now about how how she could be a life coach. You know, like in a way, yeah, she did the right thing. You know, if you mm-hmm. if you can learn from things in your life mm. to be better. And those things can be applied to other people, then yes, you could. Yeah, you know, you are. You know, assuming it works. Of that's course, that's true. Assuming it works. Yes, you know, because otherwise, true. otherwise, you get those people who are like, "Well, amethyst didn't work for me, but um, you know, ruby quartz does." You know, like <laughs> yeah, then, then you're <laughs> the a new spiritual age. being, I guess. <laughs> okay. Um, so, anyway, so in, in, and 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 on top of that, in doing so, she figured out that there are the five different types of people are number one you get energetic now these are the type of blueprints people who who get turned on um not by 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 thought but uh, not by touch but more about thought that they at the very thought of like oh yes tonight i'm gonna have the the sex Uh, you know i see that they get turned on it's anticipation teasing and lots of yes space it's lots of space. Hello. So, <laughs> like I'm here, bitches. Like <laughs> actually, exactly actually. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, let's go through this. Then I want to talk yes. about us and which ones okay. we we identify with. Okay. 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 And then you get sensual blueprints, which which are basically those who, who it's it's smell, touch, aesthetic. Um, mm, mm, mm. So so it's it's the, these are all the the, the little touches so little th- smells, this this is this know? is the this is the thing where it's like um you guys haven't gotten ready for a long while and then you decide to go out and she just looks so good phenomenal and you're just like yeah let's just stay in because you're gonna get ravished now <laughs> exactly no no let's just stay in that was your entire blueprint speaking. okay 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 and then you get sexual which it's basically that that is the most common blueprint this is the um, vanilla <laughs> yeah, it's basically the vanilla where you, you you get turned on when someone shows this, shows their boobs to you. You get turned on when they touch you in in all the naughty bits. Well, I mean, um, isn't okay. So everybody got this one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Again, this is one of those cases that energetic will eventually become sexual. Yeah, sexual yeah, yeah, yeah. Will eventually, obviously, become sexual. obviously, obviously. Yeah. But but many people they won't get turned on by just smell or touch. You know. Yeah, so this true. is the standard. Okay, I see, I see. This, this is the bar. Okay, so okay, so this is this is yeah. That's it, that's like the base. That's the base. Yes. Everybody is this, but you could be one of the others as well. Exactly. Okay. Um, and then you get kinky, which is the type of person who is turned on by all things that are taboo. Now, it, uh, for some reason, they had to emphasize the fact that it's not necessarily super weird shit, like you know, in- incest or whatever. But it's 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 the naughty things like like I don't know 
having a quickie when your boss is gone or whatever, you know, that that kind of thing. Yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah. taboo. Um, the last one is called the shapeshifter, which is kind of <laughs> anything and everything goes. <laughs> I like now, how it's like shapeshifter, all of the above. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. It's, so so are, everybody... Because everybody on some level, come on, everybody on some level has a little bit of all of these things. Okay, a little bit of all, but predominantly one. Perhaps. Okay, perhaps. Yeah. So so the the shapeshifter is the kind of person who they get judged as a little bit OTT because they can be ready at any time, at any moment, due to any reason. Thought, arousal, they just see a booby and they want to go, you know. <laughs> Now, now, what what Jaya uh, did in order to to figure this out is is again through all the struggles. I kind of jumped ahead of myself mm -mm. on that one, but since she's she's figured these blueprints out, okay. Now this is all her word, obviously, so we don't know how true it is. But since she's figured this out, her business has apparently skyrocketed since she can now finally help people and she knows how to classify people. So what she does is, when, let's say you and I were a couple aunts mm -hmm. and we went to Jaya. Then she would first quiz us on the type of, uh, to figure out which kind of people we are, which blueprints we are. Mm -hmm. And then she would give, put us on diff entirely different, like, um, I forgot the word for it, but when you see someone, when you talk to someone, um, she would put us then in, in entirely different uh, sessions than we than you would might think together because usually when you go to a life coach you would think oh you you sit there and you, you figure shit out together yeah, yeah but that's not that's not the case um, you know what it, her, what it sounds like to me it sounds like she partially trains you in each of these sessions as well specifically maybe. towards what the other person what she's found the other person to be so like you must be more yeah. cognizant of like you know, your partner is energetic, but you're kinky. So you need to work. Yes, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, probably... so maybe just throw the thought out. Like if your partner is energetic, maybe before you get home, just, just do a naughty <laughs> t uh, t uh, sex or something yes, to get yes. their juices flowing. <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah, I would see that. Okay. And it, okay. I found this super interesting. Um, obviously, it doesn't attribute. I don't know how true this is to anyone yeah, and everyone. Yeah. Um, but I thought it's it's good to talk about it. it look, it's interesting. Um, mm. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm a bit like, okay, so I, I, I think Shapeshifter and Kinky are probably out for me. Um, yeah, yeah. And so it would probably be the top two, energetic and sensual, you know, mm -hmm. because... I would, personally, I would say you are sensual. Well, yes, I mean, because... we, we, we've spoken about Frizzin, yes, you know, with the music exactly. and the... You get the you get the skin crawlies. You 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 are super heightened in everything. Also, I really like aesthetics. Like, I don't mm. mean this from like a superficial perspective, right? Mm. But things that are attractive to me are like when people are well maintained and well manicured. And I don't yeah. specifically just mean from a nails perspective. I mean like they look after themselves. That to me yeah. is attractive. Someone who, someone who has you know, all the ducks in a row. Someone who, like, you know, you know specifically, like, you know, she dresses well and her, she, she has good teeth and she smells amazing. You know, like, those kinds of things. That's good for me. Like, yes. Yeah. You know? See, I I think you're you're the sensual type. And obviously that, that goes into sexual once you, you do the... <laughs> Everybody thing. is in that one. So. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I think definitely you're sensual. I don't know what I am, by the way. <laughs> you. I think yeah. I would say because I think you're the, obviously the middle one. Yeah, obviously. And I, I don't, I don't, sexual. I, I don't know what your kinky is, your kinks are. So I don't, I can't speak if there's any one of those. I think you're pretty vanilla, I Ed. I think so. I feel very <laughs> vanilla. I, I, do, I can get turned on at, at the mere thoughts of like what's coming. So then it would but be I, energetic because that's but energetic. Then, I wouldn't. I wouldn't call myself energetic because it it doesn't happen just because always. No, but it's more along the lines you know? of like you you're sitting and you're writing an article or right now you're texting and all of a sudden you get a text from from Marianne and she's like she's like yeah money lauded forget me you know and you're you're just like oh yeah. <laughs> 
But that's actually very true. There you go. <laughs> that's very, very true. Um, I, I don't know. I haven't put any thought to it. Well, maybe I would love to a know little bit energy. Maybe what, but what do our sexual. listeners think, hey? Yes. I like, mean, well, assuming, you? of course, oh, you want yeah. to reveal this to us. I mean, just let us know. It's not a big deal. Yeah. You know? like, I'd like to think we're all adults here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd like to think that. And if you're not, please don't always listen to us. You, <laughs> no, no, come no, back in no, a few no. years. Listen to every podcast. Just skip over the section that is clearly labeled NSFW. Yeah, we, we have a okay. jingle going for it, okay? <laughs> we, we have an outro going for it. You'll know. Yeah, speaking of <laughs> NSFW. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of that section. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. <laughs> It was a quick one. I thought it interesting. No, it was things. good. Actually, there was a, f- a few things we, we cut out um, just because, I don't know. Did they don't they seem were... appropriate. Well, they went super, super relevant, so it's fine. We'll see if they'll slot into a future episode. But yeah, there we go. End of mm. episode 63, season 2, 21. Thank you all for listening and for writing in and for being a part of this journey of gettleness. You know, so that you can be gettlefied and become so you a ghetto folk. All. You know, <laughs> yeah, a get it all. folk. <laughs> you you got to get them all, right? Oh, let's catch them all. Gettle, gettle. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Whatever. Gotta uh, get, gotta get all. <laughs> gonna get all. You, you you're gotta gonna get, get all. You're gonna get all. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ibit, thank you once again for another week. I am mm. missing you in studio. It's uh, it was it's been such a pleasure having to do it face to face with you. You know, to go back mm. to doing it digitally is, is a bit strange, I must say. Um, but it's worked really well, I think, this week. So far, yeah. Um, I, I just well, hope that, that everything is fine in the back end when we eventually end. That's that's <laughs> what I'm literally checking everything now. And I'm so, you so know, Because um, Edward and I, we, we no longer edit. Whenever possible, we just don't edit. We just put together and we, we push out. So like in today's episode, you heard him mention Cobalt and his iPad. And that's because... Cobalt walked in while I was speaking and he dropped his iPad. So for those of you who are not watching, <laughs> that is what happened. <laughs> yep. But yeah, um, for those of you again who do listen from other places in the world, by the time this episode goes live, it'll be the 4th of July. So happy Independence Day, America. Um, happy birthday, Marianne. Is it Marianne's on the 4th? Yes. <laughs> oh, happy birthday, so, Marianne. Uh, so, so I think she listens. Yeah. I need my basis covered. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. Um, we yeah. hope you all have a wonderful week ahead for yourself as well, Eduardo. You and too. we will see you all again next week. Mm. Ciao for now. Bye.